Hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting edition of Biographic, the show in which I, Matt the Game Boy, take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy Library, one cart at a time. This week we're going to be looking at yet another Japanese exclusive for Japanuary with Yankin Man. Rock, paper, scissors. Three simple words utter the world over to solve problems great and small. Who's picking up the check? Who's doing the dishes? Who lives and who dies? But if you think we in the West play rock, paper, scissors a lot, you apparently not heard how beloved the game is in Japan. You see, in Japan, Yanken is a cultural cornerstone. While they didn't invent the game, that credit goes to ancient China if historical records are to be believed, Yanken is, or so I'm told, a go-to method for solving disputes in Japanese culture. While it's more in schoolyards than in boardrooms, it was once used, for example, to figure out who would get the rights to auction off the $20 million art collection of Mass Pro Denko Corporation. It's used yearly to make all kinds of decisions by idol group AKB48, and, less dramatically, is often employed in restaurant promotions up and down the country to offer, say, discounts. Unsurprisingly, the idea of Jankin permeated into the larger sphere of Japanese culture via video games and anime. While it's mainly used in anime for comic relief, the whole A beats B beats C beats A idea of balancing combat is something that's heavily inspired games like Fire Emblem, Mega Man and the Pokemon series. That's not to say that some games don't take on the random chance element of rock, paper, scissors either, but there are way too many suppressed childhood tantrums involving playing Alex Kidd to really get into that. With Jenkins' popularity, I guess you could say that it was an inevitability that someone would eventually make an anime based solely on the concept. In 1991, that's exactly what Ashi Productions and Big West did. They made Janken Man, a series based around the titular superhero who naturally fights evil using the powers of rock, paper, scissors. While Janken Man's battles with Osadashi Mask only lasted for 51 episodes, the rather cutesy series did spawn its own movies and two games. One is its own rock, paper, scissors style arcade game, the other is the topic of today's video for the Nintendo Game Boy. Developed by Nippon Computer Systems and published under the Young Messiah brand, Yankin Man is part platformer, part rock, paper, scissors memory game. Playing as Yankin, you must travel through five vertically scrolling levels, racing against a timer to save your friends at the end of the level. Along the way, you will need to dodge enemies, collect and avoid various pickups, and on occasion, play a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. In what I can only assume was down to NCS trying to stay true to the very preschool aesthetics of the show, there's no real combat in Janke Man beyond the ability to jump on an enemy's head with the A or the B button. When I first put the cartridge in, I thought it would be standard fare for A to be jump and B to be fire. The ability to use either one of the letter buttons to jump made me scratch my head a little at the game's simplicity. Then I jumped on an enemy's head and they didn't die, just momentarily froze in place and allows me to jump off of them. Similarly, the player can't really be killed either, only stunned why Jankin throws a little tantrum on the floor. Honestly, at first, it kind of felt a little odd that the game would take such a pacifistic stance. Then I realised that such a twee game not encouraging violence probably says more about me and the state of video games than it does about Jankin Man. Instead of viewing NPC sprites as enemies, it's honestly better to view them as obstacles. As I've already mentioned, them hitting you isn't death, it's just a delay. Jankin Man will simply throw a small temper tantrum on the floor, but it will eat away valuable seconds of the clock needed to reach Osadashi and beat him in rock, paper, scissors. Fortunately, this timer can be replenished in one of two ways, either via a fist pickup hidden around the level, or by beating several best out of three rock, paper, scissors style minigames hidden behind doors on each stage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is this Alex Kidd again, Matt? Well, no, not quite. Because you see, in Jankin Man, there's not really any randomness in play. Winning a game of rock, paper, scissors mainly revolves around you memorising an opponent's moves. Behind the door, the character will have a move sequence that if you just memorise the first five hand signals, you'll get yourself an easy win. As I've already said, Osadashi Mask is waiting for you at the end of each stage with your captured friend. His name, it's worth noting, is itself something related to Jankin. 
and Osodashi Jankin is when you hesitate and react to an opponent's move rather than relying on chance, thus committing a missed Jankin. Of course, in a world where rock, paper, scissors is the law, I guess there's nothing more evil than a cheater. Instead of just defeating him in a best of three contest, however, you're going to need to really remember his long sequence of moves in order to beat him, as you need five victories to win. But beware! If you lose a match, one of your victory points will be lost and you'll need to win another match in order to reclaim it. When I thought this system was random, I thought, oh god, that's impossible! But after realising that it's a straight up memory puzzle, well, I ended up beating him in all stages pretty quickly. However, once you realise there's very little chance to the game, it really takes away from the replay value. Sure, there's points to play for, but alas, with the game only being about 20 minutes long, there's not a lot of bang for your buck here as it's pretty damn easy to beat. The music and sprite work on display here aren't too bad. In fact, the only real thing I can say that's a bad choice is how the enemies themselves still hurt you after being stunned. There were a couple of times when playing this game where I had to go off screen and let an enemy respawn because they blocked my path of progression, which in a game where the main enemy is really a ticking clock, it's a little bit frustrating. As simple as the controls are also, it's really not as tight as you'd expect them to be. The levels aren't long, so it's not a deal breaker here, but if the game were to go on for longer or require precision platforming, I think I'd be a lot more sour on the game than I am. All in all, Janky Man is pretty straightforward. It's a foreigner friendly Japanese exclusive Shua, but as the game is incredibly easy, has very little replay value and subpar controls, I don't think it should be anywhere near the top of your import hit list. If you're looking for something with a little bit of charm that you can beat in one sitting, or you happen to see it super cheap, then why not give it a go? It might not rock your world. But on paper at least, if you're not too picky with what you play, it could make the cut when it comes to finding a place in your Game Boy library. And on that terrible sequence of puns, Game Boys and Girls, it's time to draw this episode to a close. I hope you've enjoyed and are looking forward to more of Japanuary. If you are, please let me know what to play next down in the comments below. And until next week, Game Boys and Girls, be sure to game on.